hidden gems and secret retreats in Thailand. My name is Kim Rasmussen. I've been working here in Exo Thailand now four and a half years. Uh, I've been living now in Thailand for 12 years and uh, I love my job. I'm uh, creating products and traveling around the country and being able to present for you some of my findings. So that's a great thing. This new in Thailand, there's a few things that I decided to put on here. There's a new updated Michelin guide, some new restaurants that's worth to mention, and the pocket Wi-Fi. So the new Michelin guide came out and there is uh, one restaurant that got now two stars compared to last year. So that's Suring down in the bottom right corner here. So that was upgraded from one star. There were no restaurants that lost their star. That means there were only new one star restaurants added. So all the ones you see here on the right were all added. And the last one here, Pu, is at Trisara in Phuket. So that's the only restaurant in Thailand that's not located in Bangkok. Uh, that's Michelin. So this is the overview and all the Michelin restaurants. And over here is the link in case you want to uh, know more or see more about that. The pocket Wi-Fi is something we provide to our travelers. So this you can input in your files. It costs 1000 baht and then you can use it for a month up until um, eight people can tune in on the same device. So it's very uh, useful to have when you're in transfers or when you visit temples or go to a restaurant, then you can always be connected with this one. Just put it in your bag or in your pocket and then you will have a Wi-Fi everywhere. So the agenda today to go through uh, some hidden gems. First will be Isan, Lori and Udantani. So Udantani is up here, very close to Lao and Lori is over here. Then we have the North and Lower North where we have a uh, Sukhothai. Lampang is just south of Chiang Mai. We have Tak, which is over here on the border to Burma. And we have Nan, which is up here. And then we have in the south, Chumpon and Ranong, which is in the middle here, before you get down to uh, Phuket and Krabi. First up is uh, Lori and Udantani. So getting there is you can fly directly to Lori, which is up here. Uh, it's a one hour flight. It's Air Asia and not there, flying up there. Otherwise, you can take a train to Udon Thani, uh, and then from Udon Thani, you can connect a road to Loi, which is about two or three hours drive. Um, in Loi itself, there's a lot of different areas. So Loi Palace Hotel here is what they call Loi City. Then they have the different wildlife sanctuaries. So there's Puluang here. Down here is the Pukradung, which is famous for hiking. There's a famous cave here. Over here is Dansai. And then up here is uh, Shiang Han. So all is about one hour in between everything. So um, those are the places you need to explore if going to Lui. What can you do there in Lui province? Number one is hiking and trekking. That's what it's famous for. Um, it's, I would call it soft trekking. It's not very steep, um, but it's flat routes that you elevate and you can walk up easily. Um, this footstep you see here, it's from a dinosaur, and this we saw at uh, Puluang when we went there. And the mask you see here is the Pitakon Festival, which happens in Dansai. Um, it's a very laid back lifestyle when you go to Loi, uh, anywhere you go, you can really feel that time stands still. And there's a lot of places uh, for domestic tourism. So for example, they have a Mount Fuji of Thailand, which I found very interesting and also the transportation you had to take to go up to see the mountain. Um, and there was a walking street uh, in Chiang Khan on the river, uh, which is very beautiful, but there was a lot of domestic tourists if you come during the weekend, uh, but still very well worth it. Um, this is the Pulang Wildlife Sanctuary. So this was my uh, biggest highlight. So easy walk, but fantastic views you get when you get up on the top and you walk with a local ranger um, through the wilderness and you see a lot of flowers, different species. And we also saw a wild elephant when we came out. So that do exist in that area as well. Chiang Khan, as mentioned on the river bank, uh, Laos is just opposite. To best describe it is if you know Pai or you know 
uh, Ampawa is very similar, these old wooden houses, and some of them transformed into small shops or restaurants, and some will be uh, hotels. So this is the area, so very charming area, and in the morning you can give alms to the monks, if you wake up early enough, at six. And one hidden gem in terms of accommodation, so you have Mekong Villas, which is belonging to Kun Narisa, this lady, which is of royal descent, um, from Chakrabongsi in Bangkok, is the same owner as this one. So you'll have these wooden houses, there's one swimming pool and another wooden house here, this is how they live inside. Um, so because it belongs to the royal family, the service is exceptional, so it's a great place to, to book for your clients to stay. And normally I'm not very good at sitting still, but here when you sat on the river, I could just sit there for days and just look at the river moving. And very tranquil and very beautiful place. So Mekong that's definitely something to keep in mind if you want to find some uh, nice accommodation off the beaten track. As I mentioned, Udon Thani is the place where you arrive with train and is also the connecting point if you continue up to Nong Thai and further into Lao. But there is one thing if you go from December until February, don't miss the pink lotus flower. You go out on one of these boats and then the lake is just filled with pink flowers like this, pink lotus flowers. It's so beautiful. And it's just one of these natural phenomenons that can be done uh, very uh, cost effective. And I think it was something to include if you come in those regions for sure in that period. There's two hotels that I would recommend in Udantani. The one here on the left is called Paradise Hotel. That was quite nice, new renovated boutique hotel. And the one over here is called Brown House Hotel. So there's two good hotels options in Udantani where you can uh, stay overnight. Nan is the next uh, destination to talk about. This picture here is taken from the famous temple and the mountain in Nan. The thing about Nan is you need to understand that the city is here. And when you are in Nan, then everything happens. Of course, there's some attractions in the city, but most will be in the sub-regions around here. And it's again, it's about one hour to get to every place. So the best way when you explore in Nan, because it's a destination where you stay one or two nights, is basically to do it on the way in. If you come from Chiang Mai here, you come in this way, so you can make your stops here, go to Nan, and then you maybe continue out this way if you go down to Bangkok or Pizza no or whatever way you're going, and do your stops on that way. So that's the way to kind of include, include the activities in Nan. So you do it before you get to the city and when you get out of the city. Uh, so what is there to do in Nan Problem? There, there is quite a lot. Uh, so this is the statue that you saw in the first picture, Wat Pratat Khao Noi. That's the viewpoint with the Buddha statue, best for sunset. There's an agriculture station called Pupayak, where they have a uh, form of opium making. So that's similar to what happened in uh, Ching Rai and the Golden Triangle. Uh, there's the Tung flag making workshop, which we include for some of our tours at a temple that's in Nan uh, city. So that's what you see the lady is doing down here. There's the noble house that belongs to some of the royal descendants as well. That's a tea house museum that can be visited. And there's the Riverside Nan gallery, which is actually quite good if people are into art. Uh, then there's some water mills, flowing fabrics, where they use the water to make the mills go around. And then they actually make fabrics uh, for clothes. So scarves and these kind of things. And then you have a lot of local interactions uh, where you can do the embroidery, like the monk style. You can do coffee roasting. This is actually a, a knife making you see up here on the picture with this guy. So those are kind of workshops you can go and see. And same as what you have in Lloyd, there's a lot of uh, mist on the mountain. So if you go up in the morning, you will have all those uh, beautiful views. The place to stay, there's uh, quite a few options in Nan to stay. But the one I found was absolutely the best is the Nan Seasons Boutique Resort. So this one here is freestanding wooden bungalows. It's not a big resort. They have maybe around 20 bungalows. But the, the feeling when you were there, the service, it was just absolutely great. There's also Nan Boutique Hotel, which we've been using a lot. Uh, it's not really that boutique. Uh, it's just more of a hotel. And it's cheap, it's affordable, and it's a very good location in the city. Um, but this one here is a real boutique resort. So this is the one I would recommend for your uh, travelers. Then we go to Lampang. 
So Lampang, which you probably know, is south of Chiang Mai. It's just one hour away. Uh, there's this new destination that's now very popular for domestic travelers. They call it the Little Bhutan. So as you can see, it's very beautiful. It takes 45 minutes to walk up from the bottom where you park the car. You know, again, 45 minutes to go back again. So it's like maybe a two hour hike for most people to get here to get this view. But it's well worth it, as you can see. Uh, Lampang, so here is Chiang Mai. Lampang is right here. So uh, it's not far. What uh, we kind of currently working on is we are creating a day trip from Chiang Mai where you go by train down to Lampang. And then in Lampang, you will uh, visit the little Bhutan we just saw. We will have the van to pick you up from there. Then you go to have uh, noodles at a vintage shop in uh, Walking Street. And then after you've done the Walking Street, we take you to the uh, most famous temple in Lampang and you do the monk blessing. And on the way back to uh, Chiang Mai, we stop at a waterfall. So that's a new itinerary we're doing. In Lampang, there's again a lot of things to be done. So of course, there's a lot of temples, but I think most of your travelers, they will not really be so interested in seeing temples because they've seen the main ones in Bangkok. They've probably seen the main ones in Chiang Mai. So it's not really temples that they need to see. The Wat Pratat Lampang Luang is the main temple. So if there's any temples to see, that's the one. Then the mini Bhutan that I showed you on the first picture is well worth it. Then Lampang is also famous for coal mining. And the museum uh, for the coal mining is actually very, very good. It's European standard. So similar to the museum of the textile in uh, Grand Palace, if you know that one, or the Hall of Opium in Chiang Mai, which is also kind of Western Standard Museum. So this one is similar. The Lampang Railway Station is also worth a stop. It's a very beautiful uh, railway station. The Keramic Museum, I'll show you a picture later. There's also a wood carving village. Then there's the Walking Street, and then there's Hot Spring. So here's the Walking Street. Um, it's called uh, Kat Kong Ta Walking Street. And there's a lot of architectural, beautiful buildings there. And every building will have a little explanation about what it is. So basically walking up and down the street, in this particular building, they also have a coffee shop. And opposite this one is the vintage noodle shop that we use. Uh, this is the ceramic um, pottery place. And I'm not sure if you are familiar with this pattern, but anywhere you travel in Taiwan, it's very common to see this one. So this is Danbui. So that's actually from Nanpai. Local villages, rice farms will look like this, and the wooden um, cowry can also be visited um, in Lampang. Sukhothai. So Sukhothai, I'll go a little bit more into depth with some excursions we have there. So you know that Chiang Mai is up here in the north, Sukhothai is here, and Butai Tani is down here, and Bangkok further down. From Bangkok to Sukhothai, it's about six hours drive, and from Sukhothai to Chiang Mai, it's another four to five hours. Um, there's only train running to Pitsanulok, and then from Pitsanulok, it's a one hour drive to Sukhothai. But in my honest opinion, I think if you have anyone stopping overnight, uh, Sukhothai is a much better destination than Pizza and Lok. And Bantak House is here, which I'm going to talk about later. So what is new in Sukhothai? So there's a lot. There's amulet Buddha making that can be done. There's a Kratong, if you know the Loi Katong Festival. Kratong is the, the small flower making. And noodle cooking. There's a Siladon coloring. There's a new community, there's a coffee shop, and then there's a fun farm table activity. So as you can see, there's enough. Normally, most programs you make, Sukhothai is a one-night destination. So now there's a reason to make it a two-night destination. So you can have your clients go to the historical park and then do one of these activities that I'm going to explain now. So the amulet Buddha making is done by this guy. It's just one kilometer from the historical park, so you don't really need to travel far to get there. Then you'll do the clay, and um, then you will make your amulet. And this amulet you will uh, return home with uh, to your home country. So that's the whole uh, idea about it. Um, this guy also learned you how to shoot an arrow and also make fire like he's doing here. So that's part of the things that will be included in the workshop. So it's also good for children. Um, 
it's been open for three years and the workshop is about two hours. The croton making and the sukutan noodle is done at the same place, so it's basically in a restaurant, and then you will learn to make the famous sukutai noodle. Uh, so it's a little uh, cooking class workshop, and the great thing is that these noodles, called sukutai noodles, are actually famous throughout Thailand. Uh, so that's where you can make this. Um, so I think it's a good thing to include if you want to have a lunch on one of the days, even the day you visit the historical park, we can do this one. So it takes about one hour. The coffee shop looks like this, very cute, sitting down with your feet dangling, overlooking the rice field. And it's actually owned by the GM of Legenda Hotel, um, but it's not connected at all. So this is his uh, personal business. Um, so it's a great step, uh, place, to, place to stop for a small coffee or refreshment. There's also accommodation, but it's not currently something we sell. But if there's any special requests, of course, it can be uh, offered as an alternative. The coloring celadon workshop is also a nice thing that can be done. Uh, you meet with Auntie Nit uh, at San Calop, and that's the factory. And then you will do the uh, workshop, and you can see the museum. So again, good thing to use for FIT clients if you have uh, Families with children is also a fun thing to include. Um, and it takes about two hours to do this one. Then the Ban Nampu community, that's new because the one community we normally use when we go to Sukhothai is located north of Sukhothai. That is called Ban Nampu. So it's about 45 minutes south, so closer to Kampang Pet. But this is, there's no setup. This is the real deal. So clients need to be aware of that when they go there, that it, it's not set up for tourism. So expect it to be local and not many people will speak English. So there will be translation from the guide when you're there. But what you will see is the farming, the buffalo bathing in the pond, like down here, there's rice fields. There's uh, this auntie uh, here making the coco coconut pudding. And you can also do bamboo weaving, uh, weaving like this. So those are the two main attractions that we now include in the program we set up. So again, there's probably different things we can do in the in the village. So if you have any interest, just let us know. Uh, but now we will start including this one in, in certain programs that we offer. And the from farm to table experiences is at the other uh, community that we use, which is called Ban Natanjan. So this is north of Sukhothai. It's about one hour. So if you go here, it makes sense to do it on the day you travel from Sukhothai to Chiang Mai or Lampang, and then make a stop here. Um, so they got homestays here. They got beautiful activities where you go and see how they make sugarcane, harvest the sugarcane, how they turn them into uh, weaving material. You go to the rice field where you can walk in the rice field on these bamboo uh, walkways. Uh, it's a great place. The food is great there and a uh, very uh, friendly environment to go to Ban Natunjan. Good. That was Sukhothai. Now we're going to jump to Tak. And in Tak, we have a place called Ban Tak House. So this is a destination that not many travelers go to because it's located off the tourist route, I would say. So Ban Tak is located here, which is about one hour from Sukhothai. To the west and then it's another one hour to get to the border to Burma so if and there is a river here so it's located on the river so if you want to find a place where people can chill out or if they're connecting to Burma going there over land or before they go to Sukhothai or before they go north Bantak is a great place to stop so it's as I said it's very easy to combine with Sukhothai easy to combine with Burma it's a home away from home, it's on the river, and then there's a lot of uh, activities that can be arranged on spot with uh, the owner of the house, which is uh, a Danish guy, which is Thai wife, and the Thai wife is normally staying here. She's from this province, so they built this uh, house here. There's mountain bikes uh, that can be rented. There's a uh, sit on top kayaks to go down the river. There's a golf course. There's local temples and markets to go to, and the, the owner there will take you out there. And you can also do trekking. 
So the house looks like this. There's two houses. Uh, so when you go, basically you get one of the houses for your booking. Uh, so you don't mix up. But it's uh, tranquil and very nice and off the beaten track. So as you can see, a nice inclusion to have in your program. Now we're going to jump to the south. So in the south of Thailand, there is Shumpon. Most people know Shumpon because of this guy here. That is the catamaran ferry that goes from Shumpon to Kotao and further to Kopenyang and down to uh, Koh Samui. So that's mostly the reason for people going to Shumpon. They go there because of the ferry connection. There is a few things that you can do in Shumpon and means that there will not be many tourists in this area because not many pe people decide to go here for the beaches. I just put on the map that here is Novotel Shumpon, the resort that we use, and here's Tusita. And here is the coffee, coffee place that I'm going to mention. So down here first we start with the three resorts, so Novotel, Shumpon, Cabana, and Tusita. Those are the three that we book and where clients they stay. But the thing that can be done is the coffee workshop. It's called Kopi Luwak, and that's actually one of the most expensive coffee beans in the world that's made from Shumpon. There's bird watching, so if people are interested in birds and bird watching, we do get those inquiries once in a while. Then from September to November, there's uh, more than 100,000 birds migrating from Russia uh, coming in this area. There's the mangrove wooden walkway, as you see here, which is very interesting to visit. Uh, there's the sand dunes, so if you've been to other countries where they got sand dunes, like in I've been to some in Brazil, I know we have some in Denmark as well. There's big sand dunes, so they're very family friendly. Uh, there's rafting, rafting that can be done as well on the river. And then there's the most famous beach in Shumpon is called uh, Tungwa Lan. Uh, so Shumpon is a place to keep in mind if you want to find a beach destination without any other tourists, go to Shumpon. And then we have Ranong. So Ranong is, for me, uh, one of my favorite hidden gems because uh, I was very, very surprised when I went there how good it was and so many things to do. Um, this picture here, by the way, is from uh, the Horseshoe Island, uh, one of the islands you visit when you go on the island hopping in Ranong. So, here, Lampaya Ferry, so that's Ranong, you basically cross over, so here is Burma, this is the border, and then down here is Ranong City, and from Ranong City, uh, there's a few things that can be done, there's some rafting on this river here, and then when you come down here, this is the pier, basically, if you go on any uh, boat excursion, that happens from down here, and here is Koh Phayam, which is a famous island, and Koh Chang is also uh, an island. Uh, what can be done in Renong? So first of all, there's a coffee workshop at the, at the Gong Valley, where you meet Mr. Gong himself. This is this guy. So same as in Chupan, there's a lot of coffee plantations in this area, in the middle of, of uh, Thailand. So of course, there's a coffee workshop to be done here. It's a local interaction, meeting the, the roaster himself, and you take the beans and all the way understand the process until you get the cup and you taste it. And there's island hopping. I would say for all the tours that a lot of our travelers do in Krabi, they do it in Phuket. Uh, a lot of people go to Similan, a lot of people go to James Bond Island. It's good tours, there's some main highlights to see, but if you do the tour from Ranong, you, you will not have any crowds. So if you do that tour from Ranong, they have some very, very beautiful islands, uh, Kok Kang Kao, uh, Kok Yibun, and Kokdam, those are the three islands, the main three islands you see when you go on the speedboat tour. Absolutely stunning scenery, uh, turquoise water and pure white sand beaches. So this is what you can see here. In Renong City itself, there's two people you can meet. There's um, this guy here uh, who runs or is a part of the family from the governor's mansion. So he will open up the doors to the governor's mansion museum and he will tell you all the things there is to know about the history. And it relates back to Rana V when he was uh, residing in uh, Ranong and built his summer palace there. So a lot of the history comes from there and Rana V, he traveled a lot overseas and brought back 
things from France and England, and then he'll show some of the souvenirs from there. The other um, local house we meet, he will show you around the local house, and it's still maintained as 100 years ago, so how the beds were, how the set up in the different rooms, so that's quite interesting to see. More Chinese influence. Wadong is very famous for hot springs and natural springs, and they turned them into some hot spas, made them uh, commercial, but still very nice to visit in the middle of the town. Very charming evening walking street that can be visited. And then they have the Royal Andaman Cruise, which I call a time machine, so they're going in the footsteps of Rama 5. I have a picture of that in a while. And then there's the two islands, Kopayam and Kopratong, which are both easy accessible from uh, Ranong. Kopratong has the Golden Buddha Resort, if you are uh, aware of that one. Uh, it's just four hours north of Phuket. Uh, and in terms of hotels that we recommend, we have uh, the hotels down here. In the town of Ranong, there is the one called The Hidden. So that's a small boutique resort, about 15 bungalows. There is Namsai Kausai Resort, that's a bit bigger, but those are the, by far the two best in the city. Golden Buddha is on Kopratong, and the Blue Sky Resort is the best on Kopayam. This is The Hidden. This is Kausai Namsai. And this is the boat. So when I went on this boat in uh, Ranong, I was very surprised because I wasn't expecting Ranong to have anything like that. This is common for uh, Phuket, if you go there, or even in Krabi or places like that. But in Ranong, they have a boat like this where they serve a fantastic uh, three-course meal on the boat. You put out the croutons at the end of the boat, uh, right? So float them in the water. There will be live music playing, and they actually also have a gimmick where you get invited to dress up in uh, in clothes relating to the Rama 5 era. So you're going to be royal uh, if you want. It's not uh, mandatory. But the food was amazing. And the cruise itself, when you sail out of the bay, come through small fishermen villages, was just stunning. So very surprised with this one. Uh, it can be done on giant basis. You can also charter the whole boat. Uh, it's not very expensive, so it's it's a thing you could consider. And over here, this is one of the islands. This is Kokam. So look at the water, the long tail boat, and this sand. This is what you get when you go on the island hopping in Ranong. That's what I got for you this time. I hope you learned a little thing uh, about the hidden gems and that you will include them in some of your programs. So please uh, reach out in case you want to learn more and if you have any programs where we can adapt to include any hidden gems.